Good afternoon and welcome to Resonance Arcade. Hello. Yay! I thought I'd do a short one that time just to catch you off guard. Right, <clears throat> still, still got the time of day wrong. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, I always I say afternoon. To jump in. I, I always say afternoon. Jump in on that. <laughs> I say afternoon when it's morning. I just, I, I always do. It's, it's just you should a just thing. Say good morning. Lose just semantic. Always... You should have said good night. You should, should just say good morning all the time. I would just hello. Hello. We do talk about games as well. Yes, we do so talk you know. about games as well. <laughs> uh, for those of you who haven't seen us before, this is a gaming talk show. We talk about games, game dev, and gaming. Yeah. And uh, gaming. And, and we swear I, a little bit as well. I so we. We've probably already swore a little bit, I, 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 probably. But um, yes, um, so if you're offended by swearing, please uh, leave now. Oh. But uh, otherwise, <laughs> otherwise stick around. Um, we also have a uh, we also have a fair amount of audience participation. So if you want to bring in any questions or you want to engage us in any way, please do. We do monitor chat, and we'll do our best to respond to everybody as we can. If it gets a bit rowdy, we will um, we will start asking you to do certain things. Shut up. Yeah, shut oh, up. Kick up. your mum in the face. Shut up. <clears throat> we'll start banning you with our new night bot. So, uh, yeah, so anyway, um, thanks for thanks for watching, everybody. Um, first of all, what we do is we just talk about the games that we've played this week. Oh, uh, not not many of us have played many games, I don't think, at the moment, but uh, I think... Can I just slip something in? Yes. Uh, before we go any further? Yeah, slip um, whatever you want in, darling. <laughs> um, we you do now just run... ask you to slip it in. <laughs> That's a spirit. <laughs> We do now run um, a, a list section later on in the show. If anyone has any suggestions for a top five, a top three, you know, something like that, a list-based thing that you want us to cover, then by all means, mention it in chat and we'll consider it before you throw it out. Yes, indeed. Uh, otherwise, I'll come up with one because I've got one. I've got, I've got at least three or four written down at the moment. That, uh, yes, you missed last week's. Last week was what? What was it? Um, oh, local, local gaming. Yeah, local. Was, yeah. Best local multiplayer games. We, we. Can I add my bit to that? Since no, we... you can't. No, you can't. You weren't here. you not... to keep your mouth shut. You're not even allowed to comment on anything that no. we said. <laughs> Sam is because. Sam... Sam genuinely tells us when he's not going to turn up. You just go, oh, oh I'm, I'm late. I can't. I can't. I'm going to be. I'm not going to be here today. <laughs> Twenty did minutes. Sam later. try and turn up anyway, but yes, yes, connections. He did. Yes. My interweb fell off. Interweb fell off again, <laughs> and it probably will again today. We've already had issues with Sam's uh, Sam's interweb. That's why you <laughs> see a static image of Sam uh, not doing it's anything at that's all. That's because Sam bought his internet off off an old gypsy. Yes. It actually runs on a little hamster in a wheel connected to a phone. Yes. <laughs> um, whereas the rest of us, I think we all have 100 meg now, don't we, pretty much? Yeah. Other nomadic cultures are available, by the way. Moving on. <laughs> on to our games. Uh, as, as with tradition, I will start left to right. So on my screen, at least. No, let's start left to right on the stream screen, because I can actually see that this week. Um, Lou. You start. What have you played this week? What have week? I been played? I've not really been playing much. I've actually bought quite a few games that I've not yet played. So I'll kind of hold off on talking about them until I have played them. But the game that I have played um, is Alien Isolation. All right. Um, I played it on a hugely powerful rig um, at my friends on a new widescreen monitor, curved LG widescreen monitor. What do you think of the curved monitors? Don't say um, good. They are... Well, oh, curved monitors are good. Curved TVs are shit. Okay. So a curved monitor makes sense because it's right up close, and if it's really wide, then the edges are going to look weird. Mm. So in order kind of, for any type of curved screen to work, you've got to be sat at, at the, the focal, focal point. Focal point, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which but you would be, TV, wouldn't you? Yeah. Be, if, if it was in the living room, you'd have to sit about a meter, well, probably two meters away from your TV, whereas yeah. most people sit a lot further back. So with a computer monitor, you're already closer to it. So I suppose it does make a little sense there. What advantage it gives you, I'm not entirely do, sure. Do your well, eyes go concave then, instead of square? Now, if you sit too close, <laughs> close to the telly, well, you just get go convex. <laughs> <laughs> convex. Yeah, I wasn't sure which way it was. No, that's right, concave, isn't it? Yeah, your eyes are already concave. convex. You're they're already convex, mate. Yeah. If you go <laughs> concave, and you're in a lot. Of you're trouble, more you? convex. Okay, so anyway. concave. I was right. They go the other way. Anyway, I was playing this game, it was playing at 4K, so really, really high res, and it looked gorgeous, it looked absolutely beautiful. I think any game would at 4K though, apart from Quake maybe. Yeah. Well, Actually, not even Quake. Game, I remember, I remember, sorry, go on. As a modern game running really high res, that high frame rate, it looked really, really beautiful. 
the game itself a bit dull I've got to admit it's scary um, and the reason I started playing it actually I was watching my friend playing it and he, he wimped out he couldn't play it anymore oh really so he did he actually him. he wimped <laughs> out he completely <laughs> out. he saw the alien for the first time and he shot himself and he said right you play it and I'll watch that would be me that <laughs> that would be me I am so terrible with and horror being games being northern and ours I took it off him and said give it here and reconfigured it and, and played through it for a bit but yeah it's um it's a very beautiful looking game it's a great game if you've always wanted to walk through the alien universe it's based on the original alien so it looks like the Nostromo very Had 70s sort of retro future hasn't it got the uh, like I'm not saying it's got the best ratings of any alien game ever but hasn't it got the most kind of critical acclaim in terms of the look the feel they've got it right you know it feels like you're in an alien environment they've, def they've definitely got it right the, the, there's nothing wrong with anything about it apart from the fact that as a concept having an invulnerable alien chasing you around the ship while you're doing other kind of mundane fps stuff just doesn't work not I, for a long game i like the idea of it as a different type of game because i'm as you know well know i'm sick to death of shooting things absolutely sick to death of you of still shoot things what? So basically, it's a normal first-person shooter, so there are other enemies, there are robots and other humans and stuff. So you're playing through what it would be a normal first-person shooter, but there is, there's an alien that can jump out in you at any time, thrown into the mix. Right. Is it any time, or is it scripted? It's any time. It's any time, it it's actually scripted. dynamic. Yeah, it starts off scripted, then it starts to basically does a bit of the kind of left for dead director thing, and it tries to choose opportune moments to spring him on you. And you basically got to fend him off, you can't kill him. Oh, just fire and waving big sticks. Guns, all sorts. You shoot at them, make enough noise. It make didn't have guns in the original it. early on, on the Nostromo. It's, it's not based. It's not actually set on the Nostromo. It's set you on a sister it ship. No, it's set on a sister ship, which looks the same as Nostromo. Right. So you play Ripley's daughter, Ellen. Mm. I think Ellen. Yeah, it's something like that. I know it's Ripley's daughter. I don't know. Her well, name, Ripley's though. Ellen Ripley. Yeah, but uh, Amanda Ripley. That's it. So you're playing her daughter about. 10 15 years after the um the original alien and basically you've been given you've been tipped off that they might have found the black box from the nostromo so you go along with them to this other ship where they collected it and right. all hell breaks loose on this other ship as well is there only one alien again there's one alien yeah but there are lots of other enemies there's, there's kind of crazy androids and there's there's crazed humans who've kind of lost it and scribbled on it's like like every fps game with the story the scribble all over the walls the it's graffiti. got rat man going like, loads of rat now, man yeah are there uh, audio files you can find like this is the diary of some guy that's dead over there obviously yeah i don't, I don't yeah. even know if i've played the games to tell you that that's in every game <laughs> there's hacking mini games there's crafting uh, which is kind of like the um far cry style crafting you pick up certain ingredients and you can put them together to make like health kits and stuff. So, now the alien, the, right? The alien only turns up if you make too much noise or if you, uh, if you make like too much light or something like that, doesn't it? I'm not so sure. I mean, I only saw the scripted sections. I didn't really get into the part where it started being non-scripted. Right. Um, but it, from what I've read, it seems to spring it on you at, at kind of opportune moments. Like you walk down a dark corridor and it'll just happen to be there, loitering around. Mm. And all the levels are laid out so that there's like holes in the roof and stuff where that you can jump out of you. Makes it quite scary. You walk around basically every corner and every room looking up and at the corners and thinking, you could be in there. Are so you, the um, is brilliant. Are you going to get it? Absolutely, I, no, I don't think I am. It, it sounds game, like something that I would like to play, but I don't think it would have that much longevity. That's exactly it. As as a as an experience for an hour or two, it is brilliant. But mm. as a game that you pay thirty quid for and play for twenty hours, imagine it. Really. Imagine it with an Oculus, though. I want to try it with an Oculus. Yeah, and that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? That's one thing that's making me think. If I can pick it up in a sale, I'll definitely do that because that will be cool. So is that all you've? Scary, though, is it? that all you've played this week? Then <laughs> that's all I've played literally. But I do have three games now ready to play. That I just need some time to actually. Do spend on but i'll talk about those later you need to make time you can you can, you can make time for it i'll have time less is relative yeah i'll just I'll go around the black lots hole. and lots of mass <laughs> <laughs> condense it into a really really small space and then stretch it yeah that's how yeah, quantum that physics works i think you'll find fact sounds like the lyrics are a spongle tune as well that oh what Ne never heard of that. That's so obscure that even I've not even heard of it. Anyway, yes. That's so, me. 
Um, let's move on to Sam. What have you been on with this week? Uh, I've been playing uh, Grand Pandango Remastered. All right. Uh, I've played through quite a lot. Have you guys all played it before? I've played like I've played the original. Played a bit of the original, but I'm, my memory's not really that great on it, to be honest. Yeah, I don't oh. really want you to tell me too much about it, but tell us what you think I'm of the gonna, game. I'm going to tell you the, of the flavour of it, but I'm not going to tell you about the, the, the plot or anything really. Um, what I will say is that it's a very, it's a very good game. It's very, uh, very charming. Lots of humour and intrigue, and it's because uh, I've not played that many really old school adventure games. Uh, at first, I found the way that a lot of the puzzles are solved quite frustrating because it's one of those adventure games where you basically go and rub every item on every person or interactive thing that you've encountered <laughs> until it goes forward in the game. That's it's, the way you beat it. The way that they designed the game in the first place, I was watching a Tim Schafer um, a Let's Play type thing. He was he was going through it and he was explaining why they, did, they made certain choices. Everything is context sensitive to... It was one of the first games to do it as well. So if you walk up to... Like the pipe right in his office right at the beginning where you get the mail from... Mm -hmm. and if you haven't played it that's not spoiling anything for you it's the first thing you do he looks at the pipe so you it, it takes a little bit of getting used to to how how all of the context stuff works um but i can there imagine was one thing with the, the context sen uh, sensitive stuff works it works but it doesn't work particularly well in certain situations because it's another game that's got the uh fixed perspective camera angles for everything so you navigate around either with tank controls or camera relative but i won't camera relative for this one because not like unlike Resident Evil, which we talked about a while ago. I hadn't played the original, so I went for the camera sensitive just because I wasn't used to it. If that kind of makes sense. But the, there's some bits where you're at a certain angle. Like there was one bit where I was um, in the in a corner of a room and I had a couple of interactive objects in that corner, and I knew what to do to get to the to make get to progress in the game and go forward. But he kept not looking at the right thing I wanted to do too, and I couldn't position him. And it was like for fuck's sake <laughs> for a few minutes, and then I got it, and I was like. That was really annoying. We are a bit spoiled, though, these days, aren't we, with uh, with everything being highlighted for us and, you know, it being yeah, I mean, fairly easy to play games. It's true. I mean, I, f I, I find it frustrating, but it's... Even my favourite games are frustrating, and I would say this is a very good game. Uh, the remaster, a lot of the, the backgrounds look the same, more or less, but you can click on the... Well, on, the, on your mouse keyboard or whatever, you'll have a different thing but you can click on the right stick and go to the original renders of the characters hmm. and you click and you go to the remastered ones the only thing they've changed is the characters and just basically made them high res and smoothed them off they changed the lighting as well though didn't they have but they i don't know i was under the impression that they had to strip all of the lighting out and redo it i don't know about that so i don't i don't really know what the original game properly looked like so i've never played it uh, it's, a, it's a nice looking game you can tell it's old but it has a nice it's, it's a nice art style. The, again, the backgrounds. One of the things I like about these static background games is you get to wander around environments that are genuinely beautifully created. Mm. There's a lot of 3D environments in computer games rarely get that thing where it's just aesthetically pleasing to look at all the time. You're always going to encounter those muddy textures and those little shitty bits that, are, that, that make it look crap. Yeah. Whereas this, a pre-rendered background game never has that problem because they're just still images that I are very really nice. So yeah, you get, I, I think that is a nice thing about them. I've always enjoyed that aspect of them. Mm. Uh, but the game's very funny. It's very charming. Uh, very... It's got a unique fantasy world that it would have been nice if they'd got a sequel and expanded it. I haven't even finished the game yet, and I can already tell that the imagination they've put into creating their own unique fantasy world thing about you know these all these skeletons that are, that are dead people trying to get to the next stage in the afterlife, basically. Uh, it's a really cool concept and they could have done a lot more with it than one game but it obviously wasn't that successful when it came out and became like a cult hit in the critical darling didn't it mm. but was never a huge commercial success but for anyone who's not played it and is interested in that kind of game or a game that's a, that's fun and interesting with with cool characters and really funny dialogue and quite a lot of charm and just a nice feeling when you play it i recommend it a lot even if it is frustrating for well, anyone who's spoiled by new games and everything being handheld to you and you really have to just like try every single combination of items and every single thing that you encounter and, until you to get one of them to work basically i was i was recently a few months ago playing day of the tentacle and that's very much like that you know you you get a meatball on a fork and you don't know what to do with it you've no idea and then suddenly randomly you have to use it on a hamster or something i can't even remember exactly what you need to do but it's something like that you know when you it's you have to combine items together in order to 
make another completely different item that makes no sense whatsoever but it you know eventually you get to the end of the game but yeah i i still like that i like the old adventure games um plus you get surprised by them but what i like about it is that i'll put i'll do like a random thing and then something will happen i'll be like whoa that was weird and then so that sort of the fact that you don't know what the hell you're supposed to do kind of means that the game sort of makes you go oh, every now and then you get a little bit of a surprise or a bit of a humorous result of something that you've done that you weren't expecting and couldn't have foreseen because it was so you know the item placement seemed so random yeah, the characters seem so uh, not connected to the items, but well, yeah. um, just before we continue, someone's asked a, a question in chat, but I'm not going to answer it now. If you uh, ask a question, I think it's probably best if we stay on topic and then have a break in a in a little bit and answer answer some questions. Um, at the moment, we're just talking about the games that we played this week. Thank you for watching and thank you for being here. Well, I've made a note of your question, uh, Co Cozy Lad Dan, and we'll uh, we'll answer it in a bit. So, is that all you've played then this week, Sam? Yeah, that's me. All done. I um, I'm looking forward to getting that, and I'm definitely going to. Uh, you've you've just confirmed it that it's going to be a, a decent game for me. I think, uh, in my opinion, anyway. Steve, um, <clears throat> a couple of games, not as many as you, Chris. But uh, no. <laughs> first off, um, I've been playing through the uh, the reboot of Tomb Raider. Yeah, I've got that, but I haven't yet got because, onto it. Because uh, the Game of the Air edition was on Steam for like five pound. So He's thought, got it in a sale. Why yeah. the hell? Isn't arcade sub to some model? <laughs> why? Why? Why buy something for full price if you can get it for half price or quarter price? Because yeah. we talk about games and we don't get to play these games until everyone else in the entire world's played them, including like third world countries. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree with games that I really, really want to play. I'll buy them fairly yeah. quickly. I mean, I was just thinking. Um, sorry, I'll let you continue in a minute, Steve. Um, the, I was just thinking about um, like playing actual games that are coming out at the moment and I quite fancy playing that Dying Light game but I haven't got it yet and it's like should I should I buy it full price or should I wait should I wait that's do a I, wait yeah. do I want to play it that much well it's it's pretty big at the moment anyway yes Steve go on yeah. um, <laughs> so for anyone who, who hasn't played it it's basically it's rebooting the uh, the Tomb Raider franchise a little bit more grown up a bit more sensible a lot darker um Good character development. Uh, you, well, he's actually character development. Like I was going to say, compared yeah, there to wasn't the any. And uh, you're not playing as a massively disproportioned woman either. You're playing as someone. Obviously, she's still quite athletic, but realistic with it. Um, the premise is, yeah, you're kind of following your father's uh, footsteps. You want to become an archaeologist. Heading towards a certain area, shit happens stuck and you've got to survive it's got um it's got a few different elements to it as well like there is the um, like the crafting elements so you pick up certain bits and bobs and you can upgrade weapons and it's it's a little bit does she st she starts off shaky doesn't she with the bow you have to upgrade yeah, your skill you or develop something your skills which is it's it's all part of like development as as you experience more you, you can see you're actually becoming harder and more kind of their resistance to the world around her and the things that are happening and then obviously like towards the end of it you're kind of like ah. have you finished it yet then um no but i'm quite far into it yeah it's it's definitely on my list i've, I've i nearly yeah. I, that was one of the games i nearly played but I, I didn't really fancy a long game with a story so i want to you know i kind of stepped away there's from this, it um there's there's some quite linear elements to it as well uh there's some there's parts where you can pretty much like go where you want. You don't have to follow the story, but there's other parts where you are basically just heading down a preformed corridor or a pathway through a jungle. A lot of quick time events as well. Oh. I was gonna, I was gonna ask about that because one of the great things about the original Tomb Raider, something that seems to have sadly been forgotten, is how freeform the gameplay was. The world was made out of kind of regular cubes, pretty much, and you could go anywhere within that world and grab any ledge and. You know, it, it was yeah. very free. It's, and I can't to a certain extent, it's still like that, but I think because we've been spoiled these days by games that, that do it a lot better, it, it, it doesn't really come across. So there's buildings, there's, um, there's cliff walls you can climb up with your um, climbing axe. Uh, and, but it all still feels like very much like you're directed to a certain area. 
or directed mm. to go a certain direction. I don't mind that as long as the direct, you know, getting to it's, the direction is it's fun. Long to yeah. So they don't have like loads of filler in it, like all the Ubisoft games. Then they've got it's not not it's, got loads of side quests that you don't have to complete. Uh, no, not really. Not that I've encountered so far. See, there's uh, there's different like challenges, you know, like killing certain animals or collecting certain things that are hanging from the trees, which you can do while you don't have to do, but uh, it's, I don't mind it, it's them fun. too much. It's entertaining. It's something that I'd probably play through once and then kind of forget about. Yeah, but at least you played through it. I think, yeah, yeah. maybe that's maybe that's going to be my next game then. I'm gonna be, uh... The production values are pretty decent on it as well. Uh, the other to, game... To, uh, to me... Sorry. No, go ahead, Sam. I was to say... Um, it looks very, very... Charted to me that new Tomb Raider. It has got an uncharted feel to it, yeah. Um, the, the climbing mechanics, the jumping mechanics, it's all very much of that vein. But then again, I think quite a lot of uh, exploration adventure games, third person these days, kind of follow the same suit. Mm. Mm, fair enough. With the quick time events tied in and whatnot. I, I still, I, I really hate quick time events. I really hate them. Yeah, and does, it, does anybody here like them? Do any any of you guys? What about you guys in the chat? Anybody like quick time events? Can we stop buying games with quick time events so they stop putting them, them in bloody games? Why? Really oh, because you're a console gamer. There we go. Yeah, it's, <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's going that way, is it? Is it that? That's the fucking total like no true Scotsman uh, <laughs> tactic, and it's a logical fallacy. So you can fuck off with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, using a pad takes no skill whatsoever, does it? So, you know, obviously it's... Uh... <laughs> Alright, sorry, you're not going to rise to it. I, I forget that you're sensible. Um... Um, yeah, the other game is uh, an early access game called Besiege. Yeah. Which is, uh, well, kind of a constructum game uh, where you're given... It's supposed to be medieval, but you get things like pistons and hinges and powered wheels, uh, and you basically got to create uh, siege devices, right, to f fulfil a certain task. I blow up this castle or kill these sheep or. Um, it's fun. It it's kind of like Cabal Space Program, uh, but for the like for psychopaths. <laughs> I really <laughs> like the look of it. I like the um, the aesthetic of it, and I also just mm. like the. It's kind of it's a bit like that bridge game that you were playing, and it's casual. You can just jump, drop into it, play it for a little bit, do a few levels. It's almost it'd be ideal on a tablet, I guess. It's. I don't think you could have it on a tablet because of the control mechanism. Well, with it being almost like a three D modeler, you've got to spin round, grab, focus in on certain things. Mm. It might they might be able to translate the controls, but I think it work works best with a mouse. But it is that type of game, isn't it? That sort of casual game where... Oh, yeah, yeah. And, um, I'm a bash at it for five minutes. Would yeah. you call it casual or...? I'd, I'd casual definitely call it casual. Um, the best part about it is just creating or trying to create new machines and then seeing, seeing how they work. I managed to make um, a baluster um, that actually works and fires explosive bombs. Uh, that took a lot of configuring. Because it just yeah. kept blowing itself up for the first like <laughs> half hour. I read stories of people trying to create like catapults and end up getting, like catapults to fire bombs, end up making bombs which fire catapults. Yeah, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> I like that. I like the. Yeah, that well, sounds really fun. Is it multiplayer? No. Is, are they maybe introducing it's, that possibly? Uh, there's a lot of things that they're thinking about introducing. Multiplayer could be one of them. Maybe set people siege machines against each other, which could be really fun. Actually, kind of like a medieval robot was. <laughs> That sounds but, cool. Um, Just yeah. make something which spins and it's fine. You don't. But uh, because your base material is wood, you, you can't just make spinny things and smash them into stuff because it'll just break apart. So you, yeah. you've got to try and think about how you approach certain s certain tasks. Or if you've got someone who's armoured, then you can't just plow in with a spin and blade because you're just going to rip yourself apart. But you we'll can add, uh, add flying elements to it as well as kind of like uh, a like Da Vinci style that? propeller. Yeah, um, I saw it's some fun. horrible flying thing in the trailer where it's like a f flaming, spinning <laughs> uh, <laughs> flamethrowers on the bottom. Did, well, I've made um, uh, like a very early age bomber, which is basically just a platform with loads of propellers on top of it, where it's got a hinge base and it just drops bombs. It's extremely difficult to fly. 
<laughs> you you love your building games, don't you? You really like them. You really embrace them. I'm an engineer. I know, but <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's, you know, kind of I, touches a special place in my heart. What, what I tend to do with them is I'll tend to find one that I really like and I'll play it a lot and I won't really explore them, but you tend to pick a lot of them up and try all of them, you know? It's not all of them, but you know what I mean, a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. But I like the sound of that. That sounds quite... I might have it's, to have a look at it. It's only a fiver as well, early access at the minute. Mm. Uh, there's only, I think there's, on the campaign that's on it, there's 14 levels. Uh, but then you got the sandbox mode, and obviously there'd be more stuff to come. Yeah. Cool, cool. So I heard uh, both you two mention a game on Facebook called Son of Sea or Sea Sun or something like that. Uh, Son of the Sea. Have you played that, Steve? Because I think yeah. I think you said so why why haven't you mentioned that? Are you going to leave I that to it Sam? Before we started doing this stream. What? I, so you played I, it like ten minutes ago. Oh, I played it before hour. we started doing Resonance Arcade. I played oh really? It last year, sometime. Oh right, right. sorry. You only just yes. recently played it, right? Right. No, it's no, been, I played I, it. I mean, it's been an early access for ages, hasn't it? Yeah, I played it about a year ago. I meant you've only just recently mentioned it to Lou, yeah. or Lou found it, or well, something. I, yeah, I, 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 it got mentioned on a, one of the um, the websites that I frequent. Um, th th it's finally been properly released. What's it called exactly? Sunless Sun Sea. Sunless Sea, not Sun of yeah. Sea. Sunless Sea. It's a Hello kind games. of it's set, it's kind of, it's like a kind of rogue like it's a top down uh, rogue esque game where you basically sail a ship around steamship in a steampunky sort of dark London style world and it's kind of got a, a bit of um, FTL sort of thing going on there and uh, you kind of manage your crew to a certain extent don't you like well, you have to stop them starving. The version I played was obviously a long time ago, and it was early access. And to me, it kind of um, it, it reminded me of the uh, the first phase of Spore. All oh, right. Where you the, kind um, of the cellular phase. Yeah. Okay. You... Uh, because it's sunless sea, it's all quite dark, and you only get a limited visibility range. And the yeah. idea being is that you have your home port, and then you head out and you collect, you know, more materials, get experience, and then come back when you're almost mm -hmm. dead to try mm -hmm. and recoup your health and whatever I don't know what's changed in it since then but it was it was quite basic when I played it there's quite a lot of exploration and quite a lot of kind of uh, horror style story elements into it like you can go to really weird places where there's like the screen fills up with text it kind of sells a narrative generates a narrative based on what you're doing right mm. so I, I don't know if you saw the trailer that I put in but it does look really cool it's a very beautiful looking game it's a very nice looking game very atmospheric as well mm. The music sounded good on the trailer, so I'm assuming the music in the game is quite good as well. Well, hopefully I'll get to play it. This is one of the games that I've bought, but not yet played. I may I may also have a go by next week. Uh, I might have to revisit it then if it's uh, changed quite a lot. Well, if you already own it, you'll just get an updated version, won't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Handy. Cool. Right, well, I'll get on to my list of, uh, of things that I've played this week. Um, been playing quite Shop a lot of Frozen, everybody. Yeah, uh, <laughs> been quite uh, playing quite a lot of Frozen Synapse again. I played that last week and kind of explained where I'd got up to. I've played probably about another fifteen games, and I still haven't got past the level that I was on last week. It is so effing difficult. It, it, I can't figure out how the mechanic I've watched videos online, I've watched people play it on YouTube and I'm, I'm addicted to it I really want to play it well but I'm still struggling to I can't figure out how you, it's obviously there's obviously some kind of dice roll or, or some kind of tactic that you need to use when you're running towards someone um, for you to win the, the firefight so say for example you've got um you, you plot some waypoints on it. But for any though, anybody, anybody who doesn't know what it is, uh, Frozen Synapse is like a top-down orthographic um, tactical shooter. Um, you basically set waypoints for each of your squad members. So you might have two or three squad members or more. You have a shotgun guy, um, machine gun guy. You've got rockets, grenades, and then there's a guy with a shield as well, which I haven't figured out how to use yet. But yeah, it, you can play skirmishes. Um, you can play multiplayer as well, and you can also uh, play the campaign, and I'm playing through the campaign. I've got to one where there's a central area, and there's a guy hacking, um, and he's, he's hacking for you, and you have to protect him, and he's in quite an enclosed area, but within three turns, the enemies have got to him if you don't kill them. So I'm trying to kill them and do it all right. I've tried staying still. I've tried kneeling down and aiming directly at them as they come round a corner, and they still b kill me. I've tried running towards them quickly, um, shooting them. I've tried w running towards them, uh, sorry, I've tried ducking and crawling towards them. I've tried ducking behind cover and 
trying to shoot them as a <laughs> I, sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and I, I'm not sure if it's the game or I'm sure it must be me it has to be me and it will roll a die you, you make, you're meant to put your, your your people in the most tactically um advantageous yeah advantageous position so you there is an element of randomness but that obviously the odds change depending on whether like if you're in partial cover and they're not and things like that or if they wander into your line of sight when you're ready to shoot hmm. but if you're both, both walking toward each other then it's going to be a roll of the dice yeah but it, you can wh while you're walking from one waypoint to another you can point your aim so say for example for the first two seconds you can be pointing one way and the second two seconds you can be pointing the other you don't know where the enemies are going to go you have to kind of guess where they're going to go which is part of the game which is the, the tactics mm. which is good because you know you know where they're generally aiming for but it doesn't mean that some of the AIs are going to um, like for example the snipers aren't going to run straight in they're going to stay quite far out and, and shoot you through bloody windows and stuff um, but it, yeah it's it have you not tried shooting them shut up shut up you <laughs> bloody chat yes i have tried shooting them if you haven't played the game well, no, if you, you said have you tried not shooting them have you tried uh, yes i've tried not shooting them that is actually an shaking option hands. yeah no not, not doing that you can actually um, you can ignore enemies you can ignore specific enemies or there's a command in it called continue on site so between two points you can continue on site and then start shooting people from another point i've tried all kinds of stuff and I, i'm just not i'm obviously not getting the mechanics i want steve to play it and tell me how easy it is just so i know that it's not the game you know because <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I want to believe time. it's a good game i want to believe it's a good well, game just it is. On Steam. there's a free demo so i'm downloading that at the minute get on it I've, man get on i it, man. played this game when it was first like i think it was a beta or something came out it's been around for a long time certainly yeah. Like two or three years it's been around. Yeah, they're working on another one at the moment called Frozen End Zone, mm. um, which is a similar kind of concept, I believe, but it's based on American football, like, you know, kind of mechanic. Yeah. But yeah, I would, again, I would recommend it to anyone who likes tactical games because it is very, very tactical. But I, I, obviously, there's something not clicking with me, um, and I, I need to play it more and get, get good at it. Um, secondly, I've been playing more Hitman Absolution, which I've talked about plenty of times. Um, thoroughly enjoying that game, very, very much so. Although, I have recently played a, a level that is a repeat of a previous level, and the enemies, or the people, the, the targets that you have to kill, can only really be killed in one or two ways. There's not loads of different ways to kill them, so I'll maybe I'm, I'm starting to think maybe the game designers got a bit bored when they started getting into the game a little bit, and they were more concentrating on the story because it's very story based. Um, this one. That's the problem with story. A story will limit your gameplay possibilities. Yeah. There's always going to be a fine balance. Not necessarily. It depends on how you do it. I mean, I'm trying to think of a, a game where. Deus Ex does it really well because it has so much dialogue in it. It has so many different roots to the story that you can actually get away with it but in games where you've got to put big cinematics and stuff and spend a lot of time with voice recording and things it starts to get quite hard to do that and give the game gameplay right. so it's a so, trade-off sam you've played all the uh, the hitman games haven't you oh you've yeah. played some of I, them no, I, have, I haven't played absolutely the newest one absolution i i got because the developer at io interactive did uh, those two Caden lynch games which looked shit i was like have they just lost their way and gone terrible hmm. but absolution came out i've got good reviews but it's so much time had passed since the last one that i was kind of like not mega excited well, for it if it's any consolation it, if it's any consolation i haven't really played the other games but i started playing again got it in a sale i am really enjoying it and i really like uh, the, the the idea and the concept and there's a lot of different ways hmm. you can do things but i just feel like some of the levels are a little bit lazy but the, it is a beautiful looking game. I, I so should like this this game in this series, but I've never liked any of the Hitman games. I've only really played some of the earlier ones, but I couldn't get into them. The, and it's a stealth assassination game. It should be, it's me all over. It's using an engine, the Glacier 2 engine, and that's being used in, a, in something like Evolve or something like that. Some game that's coming out or has come out recently. Um, and it is a very nice looking engine. It's beautiful, beautiful graphics, uh, in my opinion, anyway. Um, so yes, thirdly, I played a game called Defy Gravity. Uh, it's an indie game, indie title, and it's a 2D... Is that why you're holding onto your chair there? Yes, yes, I am oh. holding underneath my desk, <laughs> desperately. Um, uh, you're, you're, it's a 2D platformer. Um, I think it, was, it came out in the wave of 2D platformers that were popular a while back. Uh, I've had it for a while. It's got quite a lot of different kind of weapons in it, and you're basically stuck on an alien planet. You've landed 
and you just go through like you know like a map and uh, each le- each part of the map is a level and I've got like level four or five or something but then I got a little bit like oh, it's just another 2D platformer getting a little bit it's not that not particularly challenging you know and graphics are beautiful don't get me wrong for a 2D game um, and I like some of the ideas you've got like a grappling hook that you can use to get yourself around you can but, uh, you've got a jetpack in fact there's probably too many ways to get around the level because you've got a grappling hook you've got a jetpack you've got this thing that allows you to kind of shoot a boost of, of air or something and that shoots you up in the air if you aim it at the floor you shoot with a, a, a title of Defy Gravity that, that that's kind of the point is to have many ways to fly <laughs> I was <Maybe>. thinking that <laughs> It strikes just me as a game that's built the theory. around. Um, will be built around various ways of, you know, doing the title. <laughs> oh, here we go. We've uh, we've got a chat full of um, idiots. We have to start banning people, aren't we? Um, right. Someone called us all <laughs> gay or something already. Yeah, um, yeah. Skinhead, baldy, no hair. I'm assuming they're pointed towards me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't think there's been a. I don't think there's been a. Um, a beardy <laughs> comment yet, but sure there yeah, will be. Anyway, let's, ig- about. let's ignore them. Um, yeah. yeah, so I've played that. I, I said I, I got it in some uh, humble bundle a while back, so I'm, you know, I'm I'm not that I'm not that bothered that I, I'm not enjoying it that much. But yeah, it's uh, it's something that maybe uh, maybe can uh, work well. Give me a second. Um. On top of that as well, I started playing a game called Blastem, which is like a 2D shooter. I got this um, in, a, in, a, in a humble bundle again, and it's a 2D shoot, side-scrolling shooter, but it's really fun. You, you, it's just, it's a really simple kind of R-type type game, and uh, yeah, quite uh, quite enjoying that. It's just daft, and it's just one of them you just jump into, collect coins, upgrade your ship and your weapons, and then... Yeah. Um, uh, Blastem. Yeah, blast them, and that's all blast it is. Them. But it's it's done by one of my game dev friends as well, and it got released uh, by Mastertronic, and got released on a, a, a humble bundle. It was one of his, I think it was his first humble bundle, and he was really chuffed about it. So I grabbed it, and I thought I'll have a go with it, see what it's like. It's just good, just good fun, you know. I think it's dead cheap on Steam if you want to grab it. Um, right, if everyone just bears with me for a second, I shall get rid of these um, these spammy yeah, guys. What frightful oiks they must be. Yes, putting me off, putting me off my, oh, very uh, my stroke. Frightful mm. oiks. <laughs> <laughs> you don't hear that word enough, do you, oiks? I've been watching, um, I'm sure it was in Blackadder 3, I've been watching through uh, Blackadder again, jumping over Series 1, as I'm sure most people do. Uh, so I'm sure I've just been picking up a little bit of Hugh Laurie's Prince George. Well, you skipped past the first series. Yeah, I've got them all on See, DVD, I but I remember not don't like the first one. It's it's just not as nowhere near as funny. They just because we're about to talk about something else whilst uh, important yeah. computer stuff is happening. But yeah, <laughs> one of the things about the first series is that the dynamic of clever to stupid is Baldrick is the clever one, and um, yeah. Blackadder like is the but which kind of makes sense in terms of like he's the upper class tough idiot boy who never doesn't know how to do anything. And the sort of working class normal bloke has actually got some fucking brains in his head because he had to get by in the world. But it's more funny when Blackadder is the sarcastic, clever dickhead that he is in 2, 3 and 4. It's just yeah. a much better way of doing it and I find them much more amusing. So I like the first series, but if I'm going to like... I just fancied watching some and I just started at series 2. You know, like I just I remember having really good memories of that one and started there. Fair I've got enough. it on DVD, I've got like the box set, and I was just like, oh, yeah, I fancy watching a bit of that. I might go back to series, but it doesn't really matter because it's time, it just, you can just jump between them whenever you feel like it anyway. Yeah, gosh. And Has then get ready a, for a big cry at the end of series four. A game. game based on Blackadder. Has there ever been? I'm trying to think if there has been or not. Well, like a 2D adventure game with lots It'll of been an 80s sarcasm story, yeah. and fucking. Yeah, lots of threatening to poke Baldrick with various sharp implements. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. It's as sitcoms go. I'm not sure anyone, any of those, should be made into a game. We've all seen. Has anyone seen the Home Improvement game? No. Just, just there's a. I'm sure I've seen some uh, online Let's Player do it, and it just is absolutely ridiculous. Like, 
he's, you know, he has like Tim Allen just running through the jungle fighting dinosaurs and stuff. It's got nothing to do with the show at all. Uh, anyway. Right, sorry about that. I think I have dealt with the problem. We had quite a lot of people come in then, so... Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Sorry about anyone who may have been offended by the uh, hatred in the, the channel. Band of I was saying that, our, uh, that man and lose cams are swapped. No, I'm watching the video. They're not. They're not swapped. I don't know why they think that is. Anyway, um, right, so I was... What, too much what? Minesweeper. Yes, yes, too much minesweep Minesweeper. So yeah, Blast... <laughs> I just wanted to say something about Blastom again, because it is a lot of fun, and I think it's dead cheap on Steam, and it's just, you know, buy it if you like side-scrolling... Um, it's like an R-type, really simple R-type game, but you move the you move the ship with your mouse, and you're just constantly shooting, and it's just daft, just a bit of fun. So, I mean, when it comes to uh, sideways scroll and blast em ups, I don't know. I think the, um, there's a lot of them, and it takes them quite special for it to stand out. Um, what was that one you had for the PlayStation, Lou? Um, the PlayStation. I uh, no, it wasn't Ikaruga. That's uh, top up. Oh. Uh, it was a uh, Raiden, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. Sideways. Yes, scroll. it was Raiden project. It was a, a horizontal scroller. Yeah, that was that was fun. Yeah, that Intense was pretty good. At times. Um, th there's a game that came out recently that I kickstarted. Um, it's called uh, Mighty Turn-Based Tactical Shooter, I think. Yeah, yeah. We talked about that uh, quite a few episodes ago. <laughs> yeah, it's that. That's quite interesting. That's something else that you'll be quite interested in. Uh, basically, it's a, your, your standard sort of shooter, but it's all turn-based, and you can rewind time. It's a bit like what Chris was talking about with the um, frozen synapse thing. Oh. Yeah, a little bit. Um, yeah, you, you so basically you set waypoints and you tell it. It, it kind of shows your lines as to where your bullets are going to go. It's not like 100% accurate in terms of this is, you know, you're going to hit because you don't know where the enemies are going to go exactly. So yeah, yeah. it's quite, it's it's interesting. It's an interesting concept. Not my thing personally, but I like the fact that it's different, you know, and mm. it's it's trying something new. Well presented as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I played another game called Capsized, which is another 2D platformer that I got, I think, in the same Humble Bundle as, uh, as Defy Gravity. And... You know what? I've just talked about them the wrong way around. Capsized is the one that I've just been describing. Defy Gravity is the is basically you've got a gravity gun and a jetpack, and it's a two D. It's, it's a really simple. <laughs> shut up. Are you sure? Are you sure? Because what? That's like the same thing. Again. No, no. Hang on. Let me let me tell you. Let me tell you the difference. The um, Capsized is is looks beautiful. It's got a really nice like rendering. You know, it's got lovely kind of. It's got different enemies in it. It's got interesting kind of. Uh, mechanics it's got loads of different weapons and like different types of weapons you can have like a shotgun thing you can have a repeater you can have a flame thrower type thing they're all the same kind of uh, particle system they all look the same but they just do things slightly differently and there's like mini boss bosses in it as well and you have to go and collect things and blow up statues and it's it's a fairly interesting game defy gravity on the other hand is a really bland looking really simple um, game with with literally two maybe three mechanics in it. The first one being uh, that you can uh, you can fire a gravity gun, and the gravity kind of pulls you towards it. Uh, that the the orb that it creates pulls you towards it. And the, another one is it's anti gravity, so it pushes you away from it. And then you also get uh, you get a little jetpack that's really hard to manage, and it's just basically trying to get over these really simple platforms and jump on top of really simple enemies and get to the other side of the level. And it's not particularly great, and I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Uh, it's not; it doesn't look nice either. Either it's not, you know, for an indie game, I suppose. You know, an early indie game, it's all right, but there's be there's much better out there. But I say the best to last: Pineapple Smash Crew. Right, this is a it's it's a. The only way I can describe it is like a gauntlet crossed with a, a, a gauntlet crossed with a Smash TV type thing. You, as far as I can ascertain, anyway, you've got four guys and you're running around in this like radioactive area. And these guys are they're just like little blocks, but the, the art style is really cool. It's like all pixel art. Um, mm. And you, all the four of you guys can carry one item each. It's like a grenade, or it's a shield, or it's a heal pack, or it's a. You can upgrade it and get more items as you go along as well. I've, I've only played it for a little bit, so I haven't I haven't un unlocked, unlocked too much. But each area or each area on the map, each square is like a room, and it's all ra randomly procedurally generated. And you, uh, you you run from room to room, and you have to get to certain objectives depending on the mission that you've selected at the very beginning. But 
again, it's just basically shooting loads of enemies, collecting loads of items, and getting to the next area before the radiation kills you. It's really, really, really difficult, but it's a lot of fun as well. And it's also multiplayer, so I was hoping it, 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 we might be able to have a go of it at some point. If I'm it, you're, you're saying that a lot of games are really difficult at the moment. Yeah. A lot of games just, are just really difficult. Just observation. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of games are really difficult. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's it. That's all I've played. I'm sorry. I'm getting, uh, I'm getting distracted by people at the moment. Right, sorted. Uh, so yes, they're, they're the games that I've played this week, and uh, I intend to probably play a few more new ones at least. But I think I'll keep continue with the Pineapple Smash crew. Obviously, Hitman and Frozen Synapse. But the rest, uh, I play Blaster if I fancy a quick game, you know, of summer, But it's it's you know it's not exactly a long long liver I don't think mm. <laughs> long liver <laughs> a massive long organ you know what I mean you know what I mean we do right so yes uh, let's move on to our next section which we've we've slightly moved this around a little bit so we're now doing our list section which is a uh, way of the exploding list <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's our sound I'll effect. Do. That'll do. I'll <laughs> use that in whatever jingle we eventually do, which is probably, probably not at all. Before I go, unless anyone has something very specific they want to talk about, I've got a few. Um, has anyone in, in chat got any ideas? We did ask this at the beginning of the show, but some of you weren't here. If you've got any ideas about uh, uh, five favourites or five or ten, you know, your favourite games or your, your worst games, for example, any kind of list like that. Last week we did um, favourite multiplayer games or favourite local multiplayer games. So we're talking about playing on a split screen or anything like that. Um, me and Steve did that. Lou's not allowed to talk about it. Lou's not allowed to talk about that. Because um, we may, apparently missed out a good few good ones that Lou's pissed off about, but he's not allowed to say it. So, um, <laughs> But yeah, I've got, I've got two. So unless anyone else has... Not Minesweeper. <laughs> <laughs> Unless anyone That's else has got list. any ideas. That isn't the list. No, it isn't. <laughs> list is, of mines? What, your favourite minesweepers. Your favourite moves <laughs> in Minesweeper. <laughs> yeah. There's only four, isn't there? Right, no one's forthcoming immediately anyway. I appreciate they're probably two minutes behind, but I don't care. So let's go on. Um, right, well, I'll just go down my list. Favourite series? Ooh, so gaming franchise, would that be all? Not franchise, no, series. Because a franchise incorporates more than just the games, doesn't it? Spin-offs. And I've got to say Quake series. Yeah? Even with the dire Quake 4. Well, it's it's a list, so you've got to give me more than just Quake. Is that right, your top, so I'm, then? I think, yeah, that's, that'd be my top one. That has to be. Uh, top, as a series, why, though, I love so. Quake 1, I love Quake 2, and I quite like Quake 3. Um, quite liked. Yeah. Are we doing these shit. in any type of order or can we just name? Just name. I, th I don't think there's a point. I mean, fair enough, you can tell me which is your favourite, I think, but I don't think we need to be that strict with it. Um, so we could end series. I've never played any of them. What, what's uh, good about them? Do the, good, Nick, do the good games in Suki then outweigh the bad games? So. Well, I'm classing the only the proper Suki Den games, not the ones that have then been licensed on from. Uh, an army and mid so it's basically one two and three with the originals and then four so we could end teriyaki and not teriyaki tenekanaki teriyaki <laughs> teriyaki so we could end chicken so uh, remind me remind me what so we could end is then because again i've uh, never played it i never really kept up to date with it it's an rpg um a two-dimensional rpg um a, the USP of it is basically you get 108 collectible characters that you can use. Yes, that really, yeah, that's reminding stars me. Of Destiny. So it looks, a, <coughs> sorry, it looks a bit like the Zelda games, doesn't it? It's, uh, it's that kind of 2D, isn't it? Yeah, like the old yeah. style Zelda games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, no, I've never played it, and I don't know why, because it sounds like it'd be up, right up my street. Really good. Yeah. The Unreal series. Ooh. I pretty much like every game in the Unreal series, apart from Unreal Tournament Three. Uh, it still so it wasn't a massive points. fan of, but uh, pretty much everything, even Unreal 2, which was slated, I actually really enjoyed that, I completed that. And it's not often I complete games. Hmm. Mm. Well, so the Unreal series was pretty good, I reckon. I'm going to put one out there just for me and Sam. And I think, in fact, you two can tell us, tell us what, what I'm going to say. No. Uh, 
I clam can't digger. guess at all. Clam picker. Clam digger. Clam digger. Is that is that a series? Yeah, it's where you go down to the beach and dig clams. Leisure suit, Larry. Of course. Good Obviously. Old Obviously, it's not not at all. Just in case anyone thought I was being serious, so. um, no. Obviously, the Metal Gear Solid series, you silly buggers. Obviously, and never I, heard of them. I include yeah. Phantom Pain in that. I'm going to agree with uh, with Whoop Potato Power and say the Mass Effect series as well. Thoroughly cool. enjoyed them games. I was uh, trying to think of the series because all the series that I think that I have all these really really fond memories and love for have a shit one in there that lets it down. There's always a crap one. Yeah. Apart from Metal Gear, I liked all the Metal Gears. Uh, no, that's, Mass Effect Metal Gear is unique cool. in that they're all crap. <laughs> <laughs> what evs, what evs, girlfriend. Other opinions are available. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of any others, any other series that. Oh, Mario. I've quite enjoyed mo- every single Mario game that I've played, actually. Not most, every single one of them. But I haven't played the crap ones, so. Zelda? Yeah, Zelda. I was going to yeah. say Zelda. But again, we've got the criticism, uh, I lose criticism by a look at his face, that it is the same game rehashed in different forms, isn't it, every time? Yeah, but I don't think you can really criticise unless you've uh, played it. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that on Zelda. Potatoes just had a really good one, which is the Civilization. Civilization games. I've not played them all, so I couldn't, I couldn't I've use that one myself. I've played 2, 4, and 5. I played the original years ago. I was one of the first games I had on my. PC, in fact, and uh, the new one as well. Yeah, as well, haven't you? Yeah. Oh yeah. Three, four, five, and I mean, uh, whatever it is. A series that's never really let me down and has always given me hours and hours of fun with each installment. Grand Theft Auto. I was thinking, oh, Grand yeah. Theft. Yeah, easy yeah, one to miss, and I've never, I've never not liked one of those. Yeah. Not one of them, even the two D ones. Fan of, uh, San Andreas, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I wasn't either. But that was the best one. That's my favourite. No, what is wrong with you two? One. You're bullshit. It's better than GTA Five, in my opinion, still, because it's got more cities and shit in it than and GTA more charm, just... more black yeah, charm so. specifically. That's because I'm not black enough. Yeah, G. It's because yeah. it's because I relate to uh, CJ. I'm, I, it's, he's just like me. You know, he's he's black. He deals drugs. He beats people up. Perfect. And he can he can grow yeah. muscles by just beating the shit out of the gym for twenty minutes. Or get really fat just from eating loads of junk food. <laughs> you both got big afros. You know you know what I did with him actually. You know you could do that. It was a bit pointless. It like increased your stamina. But I got him really really fit at the gym. But pump, pumped him right up to the maximum. And then went and ate loads of McDonald's. <laughs> and and he was just like a fat guy with with abs. <laughs> it's just like honestly, it's really funny. <laughs> It was good though, I like that. It was CGI, but did you just die of a massive like, cardiac walk arrest? Walk around like that. You might have as hard as to be Oh god, I know. I, 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 I'm, there's so many series now I'm thinking about them. That, yeah. uh, Dungeon think... Keeper Whoop It Up, I was just mentioned. There's yeah, only two in the series, Keepers, really. But they there were both very good. But, but we don't want to talk about the third. Deus no, Ex. The third one didn't really happen. Deus Ex. Deus Ex. Deus Ex, yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't like Human Revolution, though, do you? The Elder you're Scrolls, the Elder Scrolls series, yeah. never oh, let me down. Oh, the Elder Scrolls. Yeah. Oh, I haven't played Daggerfall, so I don't know. Daggerfall. I played Arena, Daggerfall, Morrowind, Oblivion, Skyrim. Hmm. Played the whole lot of the Elder Scrolls series, not all excellent games. I did try. I think I but did Elder try Scrolls Daggerfall. Online. That's the no, shit. That's not an Elder Scrolls game. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> off. You haven't played it, so you don't know. It's, I know it's shit though. Yeah, but you, how do you know that? Apparently, they're changing it to Tamriel Online, and they're going to um, they're going to implement oh, a free to play system in it instead <laughs> what of do you fucking do? instead you know, of. Some, I know it's free to play. If it's, if it's called Tamriel Online, then it gets acknowledged as the spin-off non-canon title that it actually is, and it's not yeah. got the Elder Scrolls name attached to it, which could be reserved for the good one-player games. Ooh. Yeah, um, Half Life. Yeah. Uh, Half Life yeah. Three's disappointed me though. By not having a third one. Yeah, because it's not out yet. <laughs> yeah, but you've got to admit that all of the Half-Life games have been excellent, even the um, the, the add-ons. All of the add-ons, like um, Blue Shift and Opposing yeah. Force, they were all brilliant. Um, what was the what was the episodes, Half-Life? Two? Episodes yeah, episodes one, one and two. two for two, wasn't they it? They were both great. And to be fair, uh, all Portal. of them. Yeah. yeah. Any well, of the Valve yeah. games, really, though. Left for Dead and yeah. all that, and they're, they're all good. Twisted? No, I was going to say Twisted. Magic. <laughs> no, Way no, too no. many bad ones after two. So now, I'm now we've got say, to a point where we're just listing good franchises. So we're, we're talking yeah. about our favourites. I think we're going to have to limit this to. Okay, let's talk. Let's let's give top fives then, so we can we can put a Quick stop series, to this. The Unreal series, 
I'm, I'm going to say top three. I can't think of five really okay. good ones. Um, so yeah, Quick, the Unreal series, the Borderlands series. But you 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 loved all three of those more than you loved Skyrim and and Oblivion. Three. Well, yeah. I was going to say the Elder Scrolls series. Oh, you need them in order as well. Oh God, it's no, getting really, really hard now. Yeah, the Elder Scrolls series. I like Borderlands one and two. I really like them, and I, I hope that, that does become a proper series. But it seems like Gearbox are being very coy about that mm. and saying, no, we, we want to do other things. I really I don't enjoyed blame the original XCOM and Terror from the Deep. Apocalypse wasn't great. Interceptor wasn't great. So that you can't have that. Mm. No. It's your favourite series. But the right. first two were so good. Let me, well. let, let me do mine then. I'm going to do Metal Gear Solid, my top. Quake. Um, uh, no, actually, I can't do Quake because I don't like three. I don't like four. I don't like one. I just like Quake 2, in fact. So <laughs> so I can't do Quake. Fair um, enough, fair enough. So, yeah, Metal Gear, uh, followed closely by the Elder Scrolls games from the ones I've played. Um, I'm sure I'd have loved Arena and Daggerfall if I was into them back then. I'm sure I would have done. And Grand Theft Auto. That, mm. They're my top three. Are we doing top threes? Yeah, I'm um, going to have to, I think. In... I'm not doing, going to do them in order because I really can't quantify them. Uh, but I'm going to do the Elder Scrolls because I've just ploughed so much time into them and I've never been disappointed. 200 odd hours in each one of them. Oh, easily. easily. Um, and that's just what I've got registered in Steam without my... I actually installed, in Skyrim, I installed... I uh, played 200 hours of it, then I installed some... <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know what that is. I'm thinking. <laughs> All right. Um, I plowed 200 hours into it on Steam, and then I installed the SKSE um, script pack that you couldn't play through Steam, but it allowed you me to override the GUI on it because it was horrible, the UI, wasn't it, on Skyrim for PC? So yeah, I then I played so it all the way through again as an Argonian instead of a... I think... I always play as um, a Red Guard. I uh, always play as a Red Guard. They're, they're actually the best rounded character to play. Oh, I, I like to play as a Nord. Can and you, you always kick the shit out of everything playing as a Nord as well. So my, my, all my red guards are always nails as well because I always go for melee characters and I never bother with the, the magic in Elder Scrolls games. The I do, but it's always a secondary Skyrim. consideration for me. The, the archery is Skyrim as well. So I yes, played as a, I think my first go around I played as a Khajiit um, archer slash stab you up. There's, okay. there's not much better than playing a, as a Khajiit in Oblivion and getting your agility right up and just bouncing, <laughs> just jump over bouncing city walls. Off, off, yeah, yeah. on top of castles. I love that and stuff. shit. I like the Khajiit, man. They're, they're good. Uh, I'm still trying to think of my other two. Go I'm going to say Half Life. All right. Because again, never been disappointed and just ploughed. That just sucked so many hours out of my life. Um, and I'm going to say Suka then. There you go, three. See, now oh. I want to say Zelda, and I've forgotten about Zelda, but oh, I can't. Ah, fuck Zelda. <laughs> Don't fuck Zelda. It's no, right, actually, just, you can if you want. Why three, can't I fuck Zelda? Because I, I, did, I did the old, I did the yeah, old trick yeah. of thinking it was Link for a second, and I was like, oh no, that old Chris, what are you, you doing? You might want to fuck Link as well. Yeah? Yeah, but I know, I know Steve's... Well, it's dangerous to go well, alone. Other, so other sexualities are available. Yeah, I know, I know Steve's heterosexual, <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> I'm omnisexual. Omnisexual. <laughs> nice. Speaking of uh, it's dangerous to go alone, take this. There's um, there's a group. There's a group because Steve just said it before. There's a group. Uh, Starbomb. Starbomb. who did the song about it. Like, mate, yeah. it's, it's it's a guy from uh, Ninja Sex Party and, and Ego Raps, and they both do game groups together. But yeah. that song, it's got dangerous to go alone, take this. Is class. Check it out on YouTube. And, and that's uh, supposed to be guys in the chat as well. I try to get Luke to watch it, but he's got this thing where there's any, if, if if there's a song with lyrics. He spazzes out and he can't, can't listen to it. So. He slides on the floor with folk without his mouth going. Uh, yeah. uh. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, I, I can't. I can't well, yeah, do um, the Star Bomb album itself is quite funny. It's got a uh, Kirby, Zelda, Metroid, all the Nintendo classics, basically. On, on yeah, a parody. The Nintendo fans aren't they really? So, mm. is it? I think. Yo, go Sam. Yeah, if, you, if your your internet connection doesn't screw up like it is right now. We're used to this, guys, everybody who's listening. We, uh, Sam starts talking. He can't hear us anymore, but he just keeps coming in and out. Yeah, can't hear you, Sam. Shut up. <laughs> Telling us his list now, isn't he? 
<laughs> Sorry, mate. Sorry for laughing at you. Is he gone? Is he back? <laughs> see we turn his video off so he's got more yeah. bandwidth available and and his audio just <laughs> he's just, just going with the a droid after a while he just honestly he just sounds like he's going off on his own and he doesn't he's not he can't hear us so he's just he's on one oh, you back this, this is sam no nope, he's gone totally yeah. so in a few minutes you'll see our screens disappear as skype decides to throw him off uh, into the oblivion. Right, so let's move on then. We'll we'll ask Sam his opinion if he comes back in a minute. Um, uh, can, no, no, can you hear me? I Yay! Can't, yeah. yay. yay! Are you back? <laughs> oh, yes. Right. Sorry, Sam. No. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is no. Right, let's move on. Um, gaming news, rumours, releases, things like that, things that are happening in the games industry that we are we are aware of or care about at least anyway we don't go through all of the news that's going on we we, we just talk about the things that have piqued our interest let's say or things that really annoy us yes mostly things that annoy us in my instance um in my case so first of all i saw an article on gamespot which i'm going to post in chat in a minute um about DLC coming out for Dying Light. Now, this article, it, all the all the big publications seem to have totally forgotten that DLC it was a bad thing back in the day, that, that publishers are charging us for games, 30, 40, 50, 60 quid or whatever, and then they start charging us for additional content that probably should have been in the game in the first place, mm. most of the time anyway. Now, if it's aesthetic, it's aesthetic things, you know, costume packs and that, fair enough, charge for it. I don't want it anyway. But if it's game content... I still think there's something wrong with it or it depends how big the content is I suppose I mean if it's a if it's a substantial amount of um, missions or a substantial amount of inf it depends how much you're paying for it as well I think anyway so um, D uh, Dying Light has brought DLC out in less than two weeks after it's been released now this this says to me that we're getting to a point where that's acceptable you know it's acceptable to to, to release DLC immediately. It's, it's been put in the plan. When, they, when they've when they sat down and went, right, we're not... Uh, uh, DLC used to be a case of, right, we, we can't get this out. You know, we haven't got time to, to do this before our, our publishing date. So we'll do it afterwards. We'll get it right, you know. But now it's... We have... You know, we've got the resources to do it, but we're not going to because we want to make some more money. I don't often get DLC for that exact reason, and it's starting to really piss me off. Two weeks... Mm -hmm two weeks afterwards well on that um, when Evolve launched it actually had available $136 worth of their DLC on launch day 144 separate items a lot of these are skins aren't they they are skins but it's still it's the principle of the whole thing why is a game launching if, so in order for you to actually get the full game You'd have had to pay somewhere in the region of about uh, 160 pound to get the game and all the DLC. Well, this is the same argument that they have with casual games, where you know it's free to play, and they, you know, they, they get they get people who are willing to pay 70, 80 quid for a load of gems or whatever you want to call them. Mm. It's the same kind of thing. It's it's. Is it, what, what do they refer to it as in marketing? It's not puppy dog selling, is it? Because that's giving something for free and then charging for it. But I suppose yeah. it is. It's the same kind of thing as that, isn't it? It is. The, yeah. The thing you, is, you're you giving at, someone a game, getting them hooked on it, and then to charge and to let them proceed. You look at the revenue that these casual games are bringing in, though. I mean, I, I actually spent probably 300 quid on Battle Pirates on Facebook. It's not even a very good game. It's shit. How much? So 300 quid, I tallied it up, I actually went through all my statements and stuff and worked out how much I'd spent there. This is in like six quid. Like little micro Yeah, uh, micro payments. And they, yeah, buying 100 gold coins or whatever. And I realised before long that I'd been playing it for about a year or so, not really done anything gameplay wise, and spent nearly 300 quid on it. And I just stopped at that point, I thought, what the hell am I doing? You know, I've had so much more fun out of games that I've spent so much less on. I, I got to the same point with uh, I played I didn't get that far with it but I played um, Kingdoms of Camelot on Facebook for a while then I moved on to my tablet and more but I actually bought a tablet specifically to play that now I use my tablet for a lot more but that was the initial reason for it and I spent maybe 140 quid in all over uh, about 
six to eight months uh two big packs of 70 gems or whatever or 70 quid packs for like 300 gems or something and realized that there were people who were paying absolutely absolute fortunes for for it you know so you two are the only two wide call probably serious gamers i know that have that actually going or have went into for that type of crap yeah it's There's quite strange really it is. I mean, there's a lot of you know casual gamers, or if you want to even call them that, that do fall for this type of stuff. I'm not saying that you were tricked in it, because obviously you didn't willingly. No, oh, no, I did it. I did it knowing that that was the yeah. case. But I, I was quite into the game at the time. Did you get into it because of the people you knew were playing it? Oh, or... yeah. Because I, I thought was the same as why I got into Battle Paris. Other people I knew were playing it, so it's kind of a peer pressure. Well, not peer pressure thing, but you know, it's social. People, thing. people seem to be enjoying this game, so you go and try it out, and yeah, it actually seems quite enjoyable but what you're getting is not an enjoyable experience because the game's good you get an enjoyable experience because you're playing with other people it's a social experience yeah. and that's that's a different thing it's quite I, an addictive thing i didn't buy a single gem until i got quite good at the game and then um bought uh, sorry got into a, a good like high ranking guild and everyone else was buying gems all the time and i was like I'm starting to feel like i'm a bit behind here but I was still doing quite well in the game. I just I didn't need them. I could have went, but I wouldn't have been as good. But there were some people who were chasing the top spot, and the people that are chasing the top spot, they're the ones that spend all this money on it. Hmm. Hmm. It's a fool's game. Yeah. So one one of the things I wanted to mention, um, I mentioned a couple of uh, episodes back about a game called Moon Man, which was getting uh, running a Kickstarter. Um, I'm happy to say, and I'll post a link to it in the chat, that da, 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 da. It, it got funded and it's also reached its first stretch goal. Um, stretch it's got goals. A, yeah, it's got 25 hours to go, and um, he's, he's after 42 uh, thousand Australian dollars. That game looks fantastic. Everything I see of it just looks so good. From someone who really enjoyed Terraria to see a game which is really pretty, because Terraria isn't really a good-looking game. I to quite be like fair. the style of Terraria, though. It's, but compared to this, it looks really, really good. But I also, and I've been watching a lot more Moonman videos now. You've been blabbing on about it quite a lot. It doesn't look that interesting to me. It doesn't look like it's. I was going to say fun. to me, it just looks like Terraria with a different skin. Like, I've, been looks, it... I've been following the um the development of this game for a long time so i've seen the stuff that's going into it and the, the work that's gone into it and i think possibly i'm biased because i really respect the amount of work that's gone into it and the the art style and the it's just been i feel like um i've been on the journey with the game so it, it felt right to, to fund it but it's nice to see that other people have also been on that journey and are, are funding it for the same kind of reasons that i am mm. well so what are some of the unique features that this has got over the likes of Terraria? It does it's not really a similar game to Terraria. It's got a it's got an end goal, um a very a, an end goal that you can actually reach within a couple of hours play as well. So you got to right. find the fragments, I think there's seven magna fragments of the moon for each world um by just exploring the world, crafting things and stuff. But it's it's just the it's the the little touches in the game that are really nice. The little graphical touches, the little attention to detail in it, it's it's almost art rather than a game. And the guy who did it is a pixel artist. Yeah. I've seen it, something recently, um, that, in fact I think you mentioned it a few weeks ago, that looked beautiful but it didn't feel like it had much substance to it. I can't remember which game it was now. Um, I th yeah, it was um, the Megaspheres one, wasn't it? Possibly, yeah. It yeah. Looked a, I said it looked a little bit like a, another world a flashback yeah, and you yeah, all yeah, disagreed with me. Megasphere, I think it was, or Megaspheres. But there's a lot of games like that. I mean, look at uh, there's a lot of indie games with nice pixel art that you know only have a certain amount of longevity. They don't, you know, they don't feel that good to play. Yeah, and I kind of feel like this game might fit that category, but I, I still want it anyway. I'd love for Terraria to have adopted this sort of uh, this, uh, graphical style. So is it uh, multiplayer the same way that Terraria no, it's is? Single player. It's only single player only. It says co-op on the Kickstarter page. It says it's going to be planned. It, it's something that's planned as a co-op um, and uh, a few console versions and a few other things planned. But yeah, it's a single-player game. It's going to be released. And I backed it to get into the beta 
alpha, whatever it is. So I what, should be playing. What level do you have to back it for that? Forty uh, Australian dollars, which works What's out at 25? not much twenty five quid or so. Yeah, that is still for playing for paying. It is, but if again, you want to fund it, then that's okay. But if you're yeah. paying for the game, then it's a lot for an indie game. Yeah, it's a lot less than that to actually just buy the game. But um, I, like I said, I wanted to fund this game because I feel like you know I've been involved in the the development of this game, I'm involved in watching it form. And it, yeah, yeah, it's been a nice experience. There's a, there's a, I said that Thimbleweed Park I'm following quite a lot because it's right up my street. You know, it's two D point and click adventure game, and I haven't funded it. I haven't funded anything actually on Kickstarter ever, and I'm sorry for that for those who uh, are on Kickstarter. But it's just because it, I've always missed them. I've always missed the goal, uh, the, the the funding. But Thimbleweed Park has a, a separate funding on the website, and I'm considering doing that at some point. But only because I want, you know, I'm, I'm really interested in the development, and it sounds like it's going to be cool. It's going to be a good game. So I see where you're coming from. But Yeah. Have you funded anything apart from uh, Chaos Reborn, Steve? I have, Any yeah. games? A couple of things. I'm actually just trying to uh, remember my Kickstarter login now so I can see where I've backed. <laughs> <laughs> Been a while then. Um, no, no. Um, I normally do it through my phone. Like, it's something I do when i am kind of got a bit of downtime at work. I'll have a look at what new projects are coming. Right. Not something I've really done from my desktop, to be honest. I, uh, anyway. Yeah. yeah. So that, that was my little bit. So there's a, there's a few other things. Um, that I've have you have you yeah, have you got anything I'm, to talk about? I'm quite about interested in what you've put here, Chris, because I've I've not heard about this. Which one? Uh, the Netflix one. I didn't put that in there. That must be Sam, unfortunately. That must be Sam. Then. So I've heard a bit about this. I haven't well, heard I've, anything. So uh, talk to me. Talk to me. Tell me. Well, I don't know much more than what it says there. Really, basically, yeah, Netflix have got the rights to make. I don't know if it's a live action or what, but um, a series based on Legend of Zelda. It says on the link that it's uh, live action. Right. That's interesting it's live action. I wouldn't have called that. Yeah, that makes that, the budget much bigger. And that also gives it, makes it more likely to be an absolute monumental flop. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we've... we've <laughs> obviously, we've all seen what's happened to games made in the movies. Mm. Um, I think probably Doom is the best of them and it's not very good. Uh, Doom's good for what it is. It is, yeah, but it's still it's still got that that cheesy smell of a game turned into yeah. a movie. And it depends how the licensing's handled, but I can't imagine Nintendo licensing one of their IPs like this in a, you know, it, it'd have to be franchised in some way. You know, they'd have to have full control over it. I imagine. Oh yeah, I'm sure that there's people going to be making decisions on every single element of it. But but Link doesn't speak, and that's one of his things. So how can they make that? How can they? Yeah. It's like it's like giving Dennis the Menace a voice. It didn't work when they did it, but I mean, I think there's still cartoons for it. But Dennis, when they give Sonic the Hedgehog a voice, yeah, yeah, there, exactly. It's like what, what? Don't, don't, just don't do that. Just, just do something else. Put your time into something else. <laughs> well, I suppose they've tried making cartoons with Mario and Donkey Kong and stuff, haven't they? So it's probably just. I the think next the Mario step. cartoon used to be quite good, from what I remember. It was quite popular, I think. That doesn't mean it was good. Yeah, mm. well, yeah. Mm, fair enough. I, I, so I, don't, I haven't read the article. I don't know much more about it than that. But, um, yeah, stick it in chat and let other people form their opinions. Yeah, Something that? that I saw um, a couple of days ago when I was looking through my uh, YouTube subscriptions was, um, I'll put a link to it here, but a game called Rats, which is um, an Instajib, a modern kind of Instajib game. Basically, mm. it's like a quick Instajib interjib thing just basically bounce around a, a, a map which is like a giant version like you know like a room and you're a small little character in it like and you just got as well yeah you can you shoot the, you shoot the floor with your right click to rocket jump or you can shoot at people and if you hit them then you kill yeah, them so it's very simple i know we've all played interjib before hmm. but it's nice to see that this stuff's kind of popping back up again it I feels really like, like quick it yeah. feels a little it bit more responsive like but quick. It looks like uh, Warsaw. Yeah, it's not. It's not the Quake engine, though. No. It's actually. Oh, obviously I don't not. Know what no. engine it is? But um, it is though. Look at it. it. Look at the way that the people are jumping and bunny hopping and. and I think it. Well, it's obviously massively inspired by the, has the to be. Twitch shooters. But I am totally bored of this though, as well. So <laughs> you know, I'm totally bored of these kind of games. I'll just if I want that, I'll go and play Quake Two. 
exactly. There's this, no this difference to it on a server and have no one to play with. The reason I mention it is that there's, there's a whole generation now who've never played these games. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. And they are a lot of fun, you know, at the end of the day. Mm. Yeah, so, so I'm interested to see where this stuff goes. I was really impressed when uh, the new Tribes game came No, yeah, Tribes game came out and it was very Ascension. fast, very twitchy. Tribes Ascend? Ascend, yeah, not Ascension, yeah. sorry. I loved that game because it was fast and it was brutal and it was just like the old games that we used to play. This is this is this is like watching Quake. It is, yeah, there's it is. no difference at all. But I'm just I'm glad to see that it's you know people are getting a bit bored now of the Call of Duty Battlefield em ups. Uh, well, the re- the hyper realism. Well, uh, you know what I mean. It's not exactly hyper realistic the multiplayer, but the mm. the mechanics are generally fairly realistic. You know, like bullet accuracy is all over the place and. There's not, yeah, yeah. I know where you're coming from. It's yeah, a very different I, I just, type of first-person shooter, isn't it? It is, and I, I've missed it to be honest. I've really missed this type of game. So, although this is, it's you know, it's very simple. A lot of people find it very addictive. Look at him. He's, 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 he shoots like you can tell what kind of Quake player they are as well just by watching them. Love it. You know, a lot of Quake players have been playing that game. Uh, oh, there definitely. Was- uh, there was one game as well that have, um, it's just reminded me now. Uh, it's by one of the people who um, who made Civ Four, um, and it's like an RTS where it's based on other planets, and it's meant to be kind of like um, an economic RTS. Like the game is to make, yeah, sorry, the aim is to make money, get right. trade. Kind of, so it's not really about battling and fighting. It's about trying to get a strong economy and trying to get, you know, your trade routes set up and wherever you bought off world. Right. Okay. And I think that's coming out in about a month or two what's, months. What's maybe. that called again? Um, off world. Off world. Trading company. Sounds a bit like um, a, a space version of A Train. If you remember mm. that? Yeah. No, I've never, I've never come across A Train either. A Train, A Train's like an isometric Sim City 2000 style game, but it was all about trading and yeah, um, goods and stuff. Right. Well, I'll sounds- post a link in the chat anyway, so you yeah. can have a look. I'll have a look yeah. at that. Sounds interesting. Um, I've uh, seen a few rumours uh, that have that have come out. I want to talk about the Metal Gear Solid one first, so you guys can shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> that the, the, the fact, my headphones off. Th- this isn't a rumour, actually. This has been confirmed by Hideo Kojima himself, uh, and I think it was confirmed in some uh, Eurogamer stream, or so it was some kind of live stream that he did talking about it. They're going to have a chicken hat, right, in the game. Now, all of the Metal Gear, as you guys have seen, all the Metal Gear Solid games have got little Easter eggs and little cool things inside them that that fans always expect. This mm. chicken hat, however, I have a real problem with it. You know how shit I am at these games? You've seen how shit I am at these games. And if you I've haven't witnessed, seen how, if you haven't seen how shit I am, of time. go and watch our YouTube, go and subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out how shit I am. Um, but the Phantom Pain chicken hat... If you get spotted too many times, or if you die too many times, you get this chicken hat, and it it basically gives you more time to to be seen. You know, like it gives you yeah. leeway. It's like a, it's like a, a cheat, or it's like a um, because you're chicken. It's it's like giving you an easy mode, and I've I've got a problem with that. That's just hand holding, and we don't need it. F- I appreciate that they're trying to get more fans into the game and all that, you know, but... What do you have to do to get this item, though? Surely there must be some difficult part to get. I bet you've got to like, complete Apparent. the game or something to get it, in which case... Well, I don't know, obviously. It's plus item. We're still in a, we're still in a you know, rumours and speculation stage and, and the, the releasing tidbits as, as it's coming out, but... Uh, no, apparently, it's it's if you get spotted too many times, you can then equip a chicken hat, and then that gives you... Uh, more leeway. I, I've I've got a problem with it. I really do. I've got a problem with easy mode on games, though. I've got to be honest with you. If you don't want to play the game and in, and have some kind of challenge, then don't play the game. Go and read a book or something. You know, do something that's not going to be. The, the point is, there are gamers of different skill levels. Chris. E- no one who's e- plays on easy should be playing games. Period. <laughs> I was uh, I was kind of expecting Lou to, uh, to correct your uh, grammar there, being a pedant he is, but I think he must have went over his head. Give a fuck. It's honestly, couldn't care less. Yeah, I was I, ranting. I, I, so, grammar goes out the window when I rant. If I correct Chris's grammar, that's all I'm going to be doing for the oh, show. Oh, shut it's your gonna face. I, I let you case. off with so much. <laughs> you, you, yeah. Because you love me. There's also another rumour. Uh, I think this has been confirmed uh, by uh, Mojang. 
No, 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 not yet. Uh, by Mojang. Um, Mojang and Telltale are teaming up. You know, Mojang's obviously now uh, yeah. bought by Mike, being bought by Microsoft. Yeah. Um, Mojang and Telltale games. Telltale being responsible for the Walking Dead games and the Wolf Among Us, and I think they've done a good Game of Thrones games recently. Have they? Is that is that right? Yes. Yeah. I haven't. I don't follow that, but yeah, they've done these other ones. They're going to do a, a story mode for Minecraft. I've seen this. This isn't a rumor. This is confirmed. Yeah, I'm saying this is something that has recently been confirmed. Oh, but, okay. but what 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 do you think? Is of this that? to tie in with the Hololens? It's oh, yeah. not really. No, it's um, the whole end. They, they, I reckon, I've got a theory that Microsoft bought Mojang and bought Minecraft purely to push Windows 10, and the Hololens is purely to push Windows 10. So Minecraft is pushing the Hololens, which is pushing Windows 10. It's all been one big kind of concentrated market and effort. I agree. I that's agree, I think, and that's what I think was happening. Makes sense. I mean, but you know, the, it's it's a worthwhile investment for them when you think about it. The Telltale Games thing is something separate. I think this is, you know, Telltale are doing a really good job and they're making really good games, and they they kind of established themselves in that position that Square Enix established themselves in, and the people who come to games to give them stories or to give them characters, but Telltale are really good at stories. And I think Minecraft is so popular at the current at the moment that it would be crazy for them not to try something like that with it. Hmm. It's any direction you can really go with Minecraft other than making physical merchandise, which they oh, don't they go. Cre oh, creating more in game things to build and, you know, more mechanical things, etc. Yeah. And but people the, are the still playing modern it. Computers, and... Modern computers taking care of that, to be honest. Yeah, there's people are still playing it and twitching it. And... A lot of people still playing it. It's insane. It's mostly, in the community. Yeah, it's it, yeah. There's there's a big um, there's a big YouTube community around it, kind of like yogs and stuff like that, where they're don't, all doing. Don't say it's mostly kids again, because it's not. There's there's a lot of adults that play it. Yeah, but it is still. It, although it is a lot of adults playing it, it appeals very much to kids at the moment. Like oh, kind of between Lego. sort of eight and. 15. It's modern Lego. That's all it is. I, I, yeah. I, I don't know if I don't know if you guys did, but I played with Lego a lot when I was yeah, a child. Yeah, I did. Yeah, and so I kind of agree with you, Chris. I think that it's very much marketed for children, and that's kind of the the face of it. But I'd I'd like to see what the uh, what the statistics say that the division of players is between children and adults. I think it'll be a lot closer than you think. Yeah. I, I think I'm I think sure it'll be it more is. adults. I've got to be but honest. It's the with same you. as like a Pokemon. Have you? The majority of people who play Pokemon yeah. are adults. Yeah, that, I, I, you know what? Some of the Pokemon games really sound like I would probably be into them, but they also sound like time sinks, and I probably yeah. wouldn't get played. Yeah. Uh, well, I won't play them because of that. Uh, plus, I'm not a Pokemon fanboy. You know, I, I, I think you need to like it a little bit, or at least like the cartoons a little bit to get into it. But then again, I watch bloody Adventure Time, which is. Ra a random program built for ten-year-olds, you know. It's no, it's not. Though it is. It's not really for kids. Is it, it is. It's on. It's on. It's on. Car uh, not cartoon. Is it cartoon network actually? It's on a kids um, network. Yeah, but anyway. so was Ren and Stimpy, and that ostensibly was that, not for kids. That is not a kids thing. <laughs> yeah, but we watched it when we were children. Yeah, I don't. I never yeah, watched Ren and Stimpy. It was it's it. the sort of thing that you watch, knowing that although it's supposed to be kind of for children, is not, and it's cool to watch it because it's. It's sort yeah, of... but that's what kids like. Yeah, I guess so. Um, you're hovering over it. You're going to mention it. Yeah, yeah. I'm really intrigued. <laughs> right. So I have uh, today. I've read an article in a magazine. Um, again, this is a bit of a rumor and it's speculation, but I'm going to have a rant about it anyway. Because, so am I. Because because fuck off Ubisoft again. <laughs> fuck off, <laughs> fuck Ubisoft. off Ubisoft. Right. <laughs> Far Cry Five. Right. <laughs> they've, oh, they've only just released four. It's I don't know how well it's done in the in the in thing, but I know everyone I've spoke to about it has been like meh. You know, it's yeah. either shitty and buggy or it's meh. Just fucking stop pumping crap out to make money and start giving us games. You're a multi-million pound software house, a game developer with with hundreds of staff. Stop pumping out the same crap every single year or twice a year, three times a year. We've got Far Cry Five, Four. We've got uh, Unity bloody Assassin's Creed, whatever it is, Unity Rogue and all that crap, and then we've got handheld versions of them, all the same game. It's just first person and third person perspective. There's no difference apart from that and the lore and the universe surrounding them. 
early on in these IPs, they do well. They do a good job of giving you, you know, new, in interesting information. But then they just start churning out the same crap, and I'm sick of it. I'm bored of it, and I'm going to stop buying Ubisoft games. I am, I, that's, I'm vetoing them. Unless there's something that's really amazing that's coming out, and it's got brilliant reviews, and it's innov innovative and new, and that's it. I've had enough of them. I have taught, I thought I'd had enough of them at Assassin's Creed 3. I bought four. It was okay, and I, that's it. I'm... I'm done. I am done with them now. That's my rant. I Sorry. I think there's, 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 there's publishers like Ubisoft and EA who are company. They're, they are businesses in the business of making money from games. Mm. They're not all about making games for to kind of make great games. They're about making games that will sell. And unfortunately, that's just the, the niche that they inhabit. And the fact is, they still do very well out of it. They People do good games, though. Games. They do good. They've got. They had good ideas right at the beginning, and they do good graphics, and they've got the capability to produce amazing stuff. Watch Dogs was a huge, I, I imagine, a huge successful, uh, huge commercial success. But I don't think it critically, was. it was a failure. I think. I think they did. They're, they're going to bring out a, a Watch Dogs too, I believe. And that the only reason they would ever bring a sequel out is if it did well on sales remember the amount of pre-orders that Watch Dogs got because of all the, the marketing that they did all the clever marketing that they did with that's, it well, I, that, I, that's why I think it didn't do so well I think because there's put such a big budget into the market like um, Evolve has had a huge marketing budget put on it I mean, you know how often do you see games as niche as that being advertised on kind of bus shelters and stuff it's like crazy you do get quite a lot of games these days being no but not niche as you said you do, you this do is get very niche though isn't it this is a five player twitch kind of team fortress left for dead style shooter yeah it's very weird i just i, I i'm just bored i of went it. off ubisoft when they bought reflections <laughs> that's a long time ago <laughs> i've never <laughs> forgiven for it what, what reflections? What's that? They made Destruction Derby. Um, oh right, lo right. Local uh, company. Yeah, it was so. a, uh, based in Newcastle. They didn't just make Destruction Derby. They they're made just, quite a lot of good Amiga games. They're just yeah. a faceless facade, yeah. facade, whatever you call it. Do you know how many studios they actually have currently? Uh, uh, I don't even want to guess. The last time I, I knew, they had Ubisoft Montreal, Ubisoft Toronto. Um, that's two, two in two in Canada, isn't it? Um, two. Yep. Um, yep. They've in got. Oh god, I don't know. They're the only two that I'm aware of. 36. What? You know what it is? They keep buying studios and then just yeah. renaming them, don't they? Renaming Ubisoft. Yeah. Calcutta. Ubisoft Casablanca, this is, this Ubisoft Sofia, Ubisoft Blue Ubisoft Bike. Sofia is the where Julian Gollum used to work. They Ubisoft are getting a lot Paris, of... Um, Poland, Poon, Quebec. Who? Quebec, that's another one I've Poon, heard of. P-U-N-E. I've I've heard of they're getting quite a lot of slating in the press at the moment Ubisoft in general, but yeah, they deserve it. They do deserve it, and I I hope it continues, and I hope it gets to a point where I, you know I I don't I I'm a supporter of capitalism in general. I I don't mind the fact that the world runs you know is run by the most powerful people because they've made money and they've got to that that place. I don't mind that, but what I do mind is soulless. It, the soulless part of it you know if there's a, if there's a personality or there's some kind of uh care behind it i don't have a problem with capitalism but i do have a problem when they don't help the the people that buy games off them with it they don't they, they, they've got a really rubbish support they, they, they again i just keep saying it they keep churning the same game out through a, or they've, they've, they've made all of the franchises into one big thing all all of them are the same and it, it's i've had enough <sighs> Excuse me. <laughs> getting a bit I'm I'm getting a bit irate here. <clears throat> so yes, Far Cry five can fuck off. It can. I'm not interested in that at all. This, um, three was brilliant. Uh, there's one of the apprentices at work and um he's seventeen year old, um and I think he got a, a PS four for Christmas and he got uh Far Cry four and he won't stop banging on about it. Oh it's great, it does this and I was like, That was in Far Cry three. Mm. Oh, Did he, and he can do this three, and I was like that's in every first person shooter game <laughs> but he's just like a, he's just massively obsessed with it but because he doesn't know any better he thinks it, it's great the weird thing is though is if he went back and played 3 he probably wouldn't like it as much either no. that's the weird part of it yeah well no that's the thing and you know it's like it's like saying if someone if that that um, game that you showed a minute ago which what was the the twitch shooter one 
what was it? Uh, rat. Rats, yeah. If that if rat if if that rat gets big and massive and it's like all it's the kids are playing. By Ubisoft it. and turns into an ex Assassin's Creed. Well no, I was actually thinking more about <laughs> the fact that new players will come into this and go, This is amazing, it's really responsive and cool and it's like oh, we had that we had that back in the day with Quake. But you know it said it was powered by coal. Yeah. <laughs> Except it was powered, it's powered by, by a two eight six. Yeah. Yes, I've uh, I've 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 had enough. Anyway, there's there's uh, my last um, my last comment on uh, or things that I've heard and rumours that are coming out is the Last of Us two. Um, is it Naughty Dog doing the Last of Us? Yeah, please no spoilers here. Please no, 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 not... no. There's no, there isn't. I, I... How could they do another one when blah 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 died? No, no, I it? haven't played it yet. I've got it. Oh, I haven't played it yet. Uh, how could um, they do another one when the alternate a chicken vindaloo at the end of the first? Yeah, one? fucking vindaloo bastards. But no, um, no, I know the the thing. What I well, wanted the to ask, are available. and I actually wanted Sam's opinion on it, and I wanted him to tell me without spoiling the game for me. But he's gone now. Um, I, I wanted to know: is it is it a viable option? You know, because Naughty Dog are starting to do that with Uncharted. They've now got four of them out, and they're talking about Uncharted Five. Is it? linear though like is last of us 2 going to be continuing on from the last of us 1 or is it going to be a parallel storyline or a pre uh, kind of like well it's it's a rumor i think at the moment they're yeah. just uh, there's people that i think uh, naughty dog are hiring extra people for uh continue uh, that's what i mean so even if the first one ended in a way where there couldn't be a sequel there's always a way to make a sequel or a prequel well, yeah. or a pre-sequel and it's slightly off topic here but that better call soul the um yeah, Breaking yeah. Bad yeah. spin-off is set before Breaking Bad, isn't it? Mm. So that, yeah, that's been getting good reviews as well, and it's something that I'm, I'm. I've never watched Breaking Bad. Oh, you, you, mental. Watched half of it. And got I watched the middle of the third series. One episode, the first. Well, yeah, the, the first, first the just... first, the first series is is really dark in comparison to the rest of it. But when the action gets going, it's actually quite. Well, very so, good, yeah, in fact. Uh, it's when people say, oh, yeah, the first season's a bit crap, but the second one is really good. We think, yeah, but no, no, I didn't say that. Ten hours. No, I I'm, said it's dark. I'm, it's got I'm a very... You are. It's got but a very different like, type of comedy to the rest of it. People have said the same thing about The Sopranos and stuff like that. Oh, no, you've got to get into it. I'm thinking, yeah, but I, I, I haven't got ten hours to waste to put into something that I might not like in the long run anyway. Well, you, you obviously don't like dramas because, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that... It does grow on you in terms of the characters and, and the progression, I but it gets to a point. I'm, I'm not really a fan of the whole gangster thing, to be honest. Fair enough. It's just never really flopped. It's the same as cowboy movies. Well, the thing know, is, the thing is with all of these dramas, like The Wire, the you know the big the big dramas that everyone yeah. now is talking about, the The Wire, The Sopranos, Breaking Bad. It's not about it's not about the gangsters and the drugs and the what was the other one, The Wire and the and the the bad guys it's about the characters and it's about the way that they progress all the way through let's yeah. not get too far off the sub off gaming but yeah. it, it is about it's about progressing with them and learning their story and it's like it's tony soprano in the sopranos he is it's one of the first things he does in i think it's one of the, either episode one or episode two is he, he he comes across as a like this really cool like nice guy and then he just flips like that and, and murder someone with his bare hands and you're like shit this isn't the guy that I thought he was and then he starts going to like a therapist and starts opening up and becoming a, a, a different character entirely and then he, you know it up and down all over the place and there's all the characters know, are it's, like that it's, it's, it's that character that I don't like about the gangster thing is like you know this mob boss who thinks he's above everything like, yeah hey why are you saying to me I said oh and he always <laughs> kills someone for no reason he's like no, no fucking stop Mario <laughs> It's a me, um, Tori. Hey, it's a me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mario, the gangster. <laughs> um, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Majora's Mask 3D. Oh, cool! Is that yeah? Is that 3DS version? That comes out tomorrow. Yeah, you I think held. I may be having a stop by uh, game or something on the way home. Thirty-four pound, thirty-four ninety-nine new, which is pretty good for. I know it's a re-release, but it's there's a lot of work went into it. Yeah, I, have you played the original? Uh, Majora's Mask. Not massively. I think I played about an hour of it on yeah. a friend's console. S same here. I never actually bought it, and I don't know why, because I loved Ocarina of Time. So I never I had an uh, N64 uh, uh, when when they came out. I got one retrospectively. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, it's one of those that I would get, I think, if I had a 3DS. I, the missus has got a, a, whatever it's called, not a 3DS, the other one. 2DS? No, the one before the 3DS. The DS. That's it. DS. That's it. The Nintendo DS. She's got a DS and she's got Nintendogs or whatever it is on it. Uh, well, um, there's uh, there's actually a new 
3DS coming out. Yeah. That, that's gaming news, though. Um, I've got 3DS XL, and there's a new 3DS XL coming out. Can you get all the versions, uh, all the games for it? Could you well, play the, the backwards compatible. See, that's good. That's good. Um, it's got interchangeable covers. It's got a slightly bigger um, analog stick. Slightly bigger. And I think it has actually got um, a faster CPU, but that can only be utilised in very select situations. Right. So, not really worth it. It's I, might, I might have to get a 3DS at some point. A but few if the new one's coming on out, the old one should drop in price. <laughs> Uh, Lou, you're missing out on a whole genre of games. Whole genre. Don't whole... give a shit. You don't care, do you? About it's because you're fucking racist. <laughs> That's, <it. laughs> That's exactly what it is. You're racist against consoles. I am. He is. I, I, honestly, when I saw him, it's when I was playing Gears of War two with him, he was utterly terrible at it. He didn't even get good at it either. Uh, he just, he just, he was just rubbish. And I was better. I was actually playing quite well as well. <laughs> See, that's the difference between the, like me and you and the likes of Lou. We can transcend these different platforms, Chris, quite easily because we are gamers through and through. Lou is, Lou's just a cock. <laughs> well, you, you were having a go at me and Lou earlier for being casual. Casual gamers with our, uh, no, with our I pay-to-play call you casual. I said you're the only kind of intense gamers that I know that have kind of went for the whole microtransaction thing. I've, I've, I said I'm an only... intense gamer, even though I don't play consoles. Well, of course you are, yeah, but you just don't embrace the entire sphere of gaming. No. I've tried. I have really tried. No, you haven't. You haven't tried because you're not doing I've it. Owned, I've owned three Xboxes. Yeah, but you, you should bought them, played it for half an hour, then give it away. And bought it, played it for half an hour, then give it away. Complete Grand Theft Auto 5 and I'm at. That's the only game you played on it, though. I've Why have you given them away? Me. What's wrong with you? Because I can't, I just don't play them, I just don't like them. Don't give them away like then. Consoles. I've got a Commodore 64 down there and I'm giving away because I don't play I sold, it. I sold it for, uh, to someone for Christmas. Oh, I wasn't used to it. You I sold it to someone for Christmas. Merry <laughs> Christmas, how much did you give someone? Yeah. Yeah. Someone oh, Open it up. <laughs> <laughs> Looking paper every. Oh my god, Uncle, Uncle Lewis is awesome! 20 quid, please. <laughs> well, I'm only, what's, what's a quid? I'm only five. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I said. <laughs> yeah. Right, so I have run out of news now. I've run out of um, of topics to talk about. Is there anything else you guys are uh, uh, thinking about yeah. or going on about at the moment? Mm, not really. I said I've got I've got a fair amount of games to play this weekend, and uh, hopefully yeah, I'll get on them. Got a backlog of games to play, but I will be playing them. Oh, the game that I bought, the um, Thalamus Mind, the uh, Path to Thalamus. I bought specifically to play with the Oculus Rift. Turns That's out the Oculus Rift version isn't actually ready yet. <laughs> um, it's coming, but it's not ready yet. So Hy hypothalamus was no, that? No, it's mind path to thalamus. The path to thalamus. I think. So I was being looks, a dick. looks fantastic, but it needs to be on the Rift. I won't play it unless it's on the Rift. <laughs> That's. But snobby. when I do, I'll pl I'll let you know. Awesome balls. Cool, cool. Well, I uh, I think. We may wrap it up then. Said we've uh, we're, we're about half uh, twenty minutes early. Again, we probably could have filled that up with Sam's blather, but uh, unfortunately, yeah. we lost Sam a little bit earlier. Hence, why everything looks a bit weird at the moment on the stream. I would have spaced it out a little bit more. Thank you to those of you who have watched, and thank you to those of you who came in and were very racist and uh, full of swears. You did a good job of putting us off for that time. It's the first time that's happened to us, so um, I will reconfigure the bot so he bans anybody who swears from now on, and I apologise to anybody who uh, who swears legitimately, but uh, I'm going to have to do that, I think. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot, and uh, follow us on Facebook, forward slash Resonance Arcade, Twitter, forward slash Resonance Arcade, YouTube forward slash Resonance Arcade. You have, to, you have to put the top level domains in there as well. That's dot uh, com to anyone who doesn't know what that means. And um, you could just Google Resonance Arcade. Yeah, just find Google Resonance Arcade. Page. We have everything but a website because Liz still hasn't done it. All I want him to do is a bloody banner, and I'll put the rest of the site together oh, myself. All I want to do is wipe my ass, but I don't have time for that. Oh, yeah. What's this, eh? What's this? Your pipe. <laughs> it's, <laughs> really, what is, it's a massive pipe. It's a pipe. I've turned into a hobbit. <laughs> uh, yes, and um, we 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 are now also for those of you who have watched us for a while or haven't 
whatever we now are streaming on mondays again at 7 30 gmt um 7 30 pm gmt uh, we're streaming our metal gear solid playthroughs and we're taking donations as well there's actually a link below us if you donate during the metal gear solid stream anything that you donate will go to child's play we're not taking anything from it uh, i think the, the the donating platform takes a little bit but we'll do what we you know we'll take all of it and put it in there um alternatively if you would like to donate to the show we will eventually start offering some kind of uh, presents and stuff whatever you call them uh, on twitch uh, all these all these all these kids do giveaways yeah all these kids do giveaways and stuff don't yeah. so we um, can... and if you donate enough money uh lou will give you an xbox and then charge you for it yeah that, that will happen in fact i'll give you a commodore 64 and charge you for it i'll charge you more than he charges for his xbox if that's that's a right. deal that's a deal <laughs> Next week's topic is apparently Minesweeper. Yes, we don't have a topic anymore. Um, that we stopped doing topics about four episodes ago. We're just now talking crap for two hours instead. And uh, yes, yeah, so anyway, I was talking about the Metal Gear Solid thing. So now we're, we are now doing the stream live on Mondays of Metal Gear so uh, on Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid <laughs> Three. We're we're on the last part this Monday coming up. Um, we're doing the final boss battle and then we'll be moving on to Metal Gear Solid 4 and then after that Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker which oh, I haven't played when yet when is it going to be over? it's not ever going to be over it's, it's going to be gonna on be over, ever ever and ever well, then, that, mean, that means I never have to pay charity then what I might start doing is I might start streaming um, ground. I might do Ground Zeroes and do a few of the missions which is only a few missions it doesn't take long it's only a couple of hours oh, no 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 that's not fair you can't I think once you finish Metal Gear you're Solid, someone else gets to go. All right. Yeah, I agree with that. Whatever. If you can configure the stream well, you lame bastards. <laughs> it's, it'll be a piece of piss. Oh, of course it will. Yeah. It you, you, you watch. Sorry, yeah, I, it, won't quite, it won't be quite as easy to get it from our computers to Chris's to then to the stream. That won't we'll, happen. We'll figure something out. That's not going to happen. No, we'll have to record no, no, it locally. You would have to. No, you'd have to stream it locally. There you go. Easy Which you enough. can do, you can give you a login to XSplit, but you also need to, depending on if you're doing a console or a PC, it makes it a lot more difficult if you're doing a console Let stuff. me think what I'll be doing. Yeah. You're not doing anything. I'm not letting <laughs> you play anything live. Oh. In fact, I want I want you to play, I want you guys to play a Metal Gear Solid just so I can say, show you how many times you're going to die within a second. No. You still don't believe me, do you? I know you will. No, you'll we do. You'll be it's terrible. Really, I, know it I know it looks like a hard game, but it just... It looks like a frustrating game. Yeah. It looks like... When you play it, it's like a, a really, like, kind of... Badly... <laughs> like, like a badly diseased chimp playing a hard game. Nice. Uh, nice. It's, it, it's like a, a mollusk that's been stood on, covered in salt, trying to play chess with a chimpanzee. That's a good analogy, but I'm not sure what that looks like. I'm 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 happy with that. Watch one of the recordings, squishy. I do. I watch nearly all of the recordings, don't I? While I'm editing them all. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'll I'll think of a game that might be suitable. Yeah. Or well, I, game I, think, series. I think Lou's called Dishonored next. I yeah, I would like to play Dishonored. But we'll see. We'll see how that is. I'm not sure I'll be around I'll for be them. Much I don't, shorter I don't want to watch other people play games. I'm not interested at all. Even though you guys <laughs> have watched me play it, I just don't care. So I might not even bother. I would quite like to do some kind of a special playthrough of Dishonored. You know, like the uh, the this this the uh, what well, the no stealth detection. Uh, no you, kill. You, yeah. you know that you know that he did that and he he recorded individual levels and got them perfectly right. He did them pre-recorded. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. he did. Uh, unless you're very, very good, you're not going to be able to do that kind of thing accurately. I know, I know, but I'd, I'd like to do something along that sort of lines. I wouldn't just want to play the game straight. I'd want to do some, some twist on the, the standard. Well, form. I think I think it'd be easier with, um, uh, with with get more modern games anyway, like Dishonored, because we've played them recently as well. So yeah. you've mm -hmm. got more of a hold, you know, a, a, a hold on the game. Whereas obviously going back to Metal Gear One, for example, I haven't played that for many years and. I couldn't even remember what you could do on it apart from no kills and no stealth, you know, fully stealth and no <laughs> No tramp. stealth, yeah. No you stealth, that one, no yeah. stealth run, get run throughs. Uh, right, so yes, um, I think we're done. I think we're done. Yep. We'll be cool. uploading the episodes to YouTube and we'll see you later. Thanks for see watching. See you later. Bye.